Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Reed Phillips, and uh, I thought it would be appropriate this morning if uh, Amazon Alexa did my introduction, but she wasn't available. Uh, she's in my living room uh, talking to my wife about the weather. And uh, uh, the, the only, the, the funny thing about that is actually uh, my wife uh, hates Alexa, so a lot of times I find her unplugged and have to plug her back in. Uh, um, I want to uh, welcome all of you on behalf of my 30 colleagues from uh, Oakland's to Silva and Phillips. Uh, we're delighted you're here. Um, we have adopted the brand name Oakland's. Uh, that means that we're now the TMT group for Oakland's, which is an international uh, investment bank with 700 investment bankers in 40 countries, so we're delighted to be part of that group. And uh, I want to now introduce you to one of my partners, Joanna Stone Herman. Uh, Joanna is going to introduce uh, our day for you. Thanks, Reed. So artificial intelligence used to be really the stuff of science fiction, right? All the horror films about robots taking over the world. But now artificial intelligence seems to be everywhere, and it's in everything we do. But if you read the headlines, and artificial intelligence seems to be often in the headlines, there's still some bleak predictions that some very smart people have been saying that artificial intelligence could, in fact, be the end of humanity, the end of the world as we know it. Uh, so this could be a pretty bleak view of artificial intelligence. But there's also the friendlier view. So for those who met Pepper on the way in, and if you haven't met Pepper yet, please do. Pepper's the robot who works here and, and greets people when they come in. And, and during the break, we highly encourage you to get your photo taken with Pepper. And robots really have become something that is a novelty as well as useful. So this robot here uh, actually works in a restaurant in Japan and can make you pancakes. So this robot can make your breakfast. But according to some of the predictions, in a couple of decades, robots might be taking over the majority of our jobs. So in essence, robots could pretty soon be eating our lunch. So all of this really brings us back to what is artificial intelligence. And the sort of classic definition, you know, and I know a lot of people are familiar with this, but if you go back decades, there was this thing, the Turing test, that really said that we're going to know that artificial intelligence is here when a computer can make us think it's a human. For the purposes of today, though, and for the purposes of where we sit at Oakland's to Sylvan Phillips, we take a much broader view of artificial intelligence. And so over the past decade or so, what that's really come to mean is machine learning. And machine learning is when computers are getting smarter because they're doing the same task over and over again, and they're gaining expertise by doing it further. And then that's driving efficiencies across the businesses that we work with. And then, more recently, there's deep learning. And deep learning is really where computers, and I know a lot of people are familiar with this, but this is really where computers are getting smart and learning and teaching themselves to do a task. So something like face recognition. And then all of this, what matters to us from our vantage point, is, is driving improved business outcomes. And that's why it matters so much to our clients. And so as Reid mentioned a little bit about us, we are the TMT practice for the world's largest mid-market investment bank. And in Oakland's to Sylvan Phillips, we think we have a really unique vantage point to see what's happening across artificial intelligence and why it matters. And essentially, what's, what's especially interesting, we'll talk about a little bit further, is a lot of these deals are really happening right where we sit, across media and technology, but in the mid-market. And we'll talk about why that is. First, why does this market even matter right now? Well, just last year, the growth was over 300% year over year for 2015 to 2016. It's still a nascent market. It's uh, estimated to be about 644 in 2016. So it's still small. But if predictions are right, this market is going to grow to a whopping 36.8 billion in less than 10 years, in 2025. So yes, that is no moon. That is, in fact, a very, very large market and one that is going to impact all the businesses that are in our, in our industry. Now, the impact that this has is something that Martin is going to be talking about later this morning, right after me. And um, there's actually a study he's done that uh, is here that you should definitely take home with you about what this impact is and means for businesses. 
And what I think the most interesting um, from our standpoint from M&A is that you're seeing businesses saying this is incredibly important. 84% of the businesses that BCG and MIT uh, surveyed really feel like this is critical for their competitive advantage. And yet, only, is my mic working by the way? Yeah. Okay. Only um, one in five companies actually have done anything to implement artificial intelligence into their businesses, and only one in 20 have done in any kind of extensive way. So you've got a lot of companies knowing that artificial intelligence is really important, but you, they, most of them aren't doing anything about it because they don't know how, or maybe because they are looking to do something that makes us very happy, which is buy that artificial intelligence expertise. So what we're seeing is a huge push towards M&A growth in artificial intelligence companies. And so we think this is gonna grow exponentially. I mean, this year alone, we're expecting over 100 deals in M&A in the, in the artificial intelligence market, and most of those are actually falling within the mid-market. And that's because the big players are really trying to stay on top of this. And so the smaller players aren't growing that much bigger. The majority of AI startups have only raised 20 million. And the top 10 acquisitions that have happened in this space are all in that range between 15 million and 25 million in raising money. So they're getting bought up before they grow big. And the buyers are the usual suspects. So the sort of top 10 list is all the names you'd expect to see of who are doing the most activity uh, in, this, in this space. And if you look at an early deal, so Amazon bought Kiva. So just to give us an example, they bought it for 775 million in 2012. And they promptly fired all of its customers because they really wanted it just for their internal purposes. They got the 45,000 robots now, which is a lot of robots, that give them a competitive advantage in artificial intelligence. So robots might be one of the things that's driving artificial intelligence, but interestingly enough, one of the big things that's driving the M&A is actually humans, or aqua hires. So one of the, the things that you're seeing a lot of in, in the deals that are being done is an arms race for talent. And really, if you want to stay ahead, there's a sort of limited pool of smart people, and companies are paying a lot to hire those people. So one example would be Magic Pony, which was sold to Twitter for over 150 million. Now, if you do the math, that is actually about 13 million per person. <laughs> so I would like to say, with numbers like that, who needs unicorns? Now, these deals are happening globally. As I mentioned, this is something that's important to us because we see a huge activity in cross-border deals, and that is absolutely what's happening in terms of M&A. You've got the major U.S. acquirers. A lot of the deals they're buying are actually from overseas. And here's a few uh, larger ones. And then you also have uh, China, who is not only a very large acquirer in this space, but has set a goal to be the leader by 2030, and they're well on their way to doing that. So that's also going to be driving a lot of the M&A activity. And finally, what you're seeing is you're seeing activity across a lot of different subsectors. And many of them are the subsectors that we focus most closely on. And many of those are also ones that you'll hear panelists later today talk about, either from the standpoint of acquiring in these sectors or also from the standpoint of being the next innovators in these areas. So let's start with healthcare. So healthcare is actually at the top. It's really dominating in terms of deals being done over 50 just recently that were done to, to acquire this machine learning to use it to improve outcomes in healthcare. And one recent notable deal that, that was in the news was uh, IBM's acquisition of Truvon, one that was, was very highly uh, awareness about. Um, and then in advertising and sales and marketing, you're actually seeing um, a uh, little bit of a, if you look at the heat map, you see red turning a little bit dull to sort of a beige. So there was a lot of activity here where companies were trying, there's a realization that AI is gonna improve customer engagement. It's gonna improve sales, programmatic advertising. But then you've seen a little bit of a fall off only because there's been some very notable deals that haven't realized quite the value that people hoped, such as the Twitter acquisition of Telepart. And then in FinTech, I think everybody intuitively understands that the disruption across financial services is enormous. And a lot of this is gonna come through some form of artificial intelligence. And it's really driving changes across everything, from payments to wealth management to the entire banking system. And I think what's most notable in the financial services area within AI 
is that the acquisitions aren't just happening from the big financial services players. I mean, certainly you have MasterCard acquiring Criterion. And then you've got smaller disruptors that are gaining enough scale that they're actually starting to become acquirers, like one just interesting recent acquisition, Money Farm, acquiring Ernest. But then you've also got companies like Amazon buying a data analysis company. So you're really seeing this blurring of lines even between verticals in, in this AI space as companies are, are, are being bought up across their verticals. And then finally there's education, which is most notable on this heat map because it's all blue. There's not a lot of heat there. And so I thought one interesting way to frame that would be to just look at this picture, which hopefully you can all see, of, of um, a classroom in 1900. And then look at this picture of a class in 2017. So what's sort of amazing is they kind of look the same, right? I mean, not that much has changed yet in education. And so I think that's to be expected. Education tends to be a laggard. And there's actually, we think, a huge opportunity there because they don't have the legacy systems to, take, to, the, to hold them back. And so we really think they can just leapfrog now with artificial intelligence. And we think there's going to be just a seismic shift very soon with the, the M&A that can be done and the innovation that's happening. And as I mentioned, there's a couple of panelists that will be speaking to you later about some of the innovation that they're doing with AI in education. And we think this is going to drive a lot of M&A activity in the very near future. So with that, let me just give you a quick overview of the agenda. As I mentioned, I'm going to introduce Martin. Uh, right after this, and then after that, we're going to have a panel where we really talk about, from the perspective of corporate development, what what are we what are we trying to acquire to to actually build uh, uh, AI in, in, in expertise in a company, and then really what's happening in the innovation of these companies in the space, and then finally we're going to hope that you stay for lunch and spend some time with Pepper. Uh, but before I hand over to Martin, I just want to leave you with one little prediction. We like to make predictions at the end of um, at the end of our event, so. You know, we, you know, Reed mentioned uh, Alexi. Alexi this is, you know, we've all had this experience, right? Siri doesn't quite get what we want. But this could be Siri a year from now. <laughs>